This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now Kyle and Tom Bias talk about how growth energy represents ethanol producers and other supporters of ethanol. This is Kyle Bauer visiting with Tom Bias. He is with Growth Energy. First of all, Tom, tell us what Growth Energy is and who you are. Uh, we represent the ethanol producers and supporters of ethanol. Uh, we have about 90 ethanol plants that are uh, paying members uh, and about 40,000 uh, grassroots supporters uh, uh, to help us advocate and support renewable energy. Uh, right now, during this time frame, um, what are some of your strongest initiatives or the thing that takes most of your time and energy? Well, our focus has been on in increasing demand uh, and allowing consumers access to higher blends um, through the retailers uh, for E15. E15 was approved a few years ago. Uh, it's been slow getting into the marketplace, but we've seen a huge uh, development in the last year and more coming where retailers are starting to offer E15. And that's really important because up to this point, consumers haven't been able to buy the product. And uh, we have all the facts on our side. It's cleaner, it's cheaper, uh, and it's higher performing uh, than E10 or natural gasoline. So uh, our big focus is getting that into the marketplace. Let the consumers make the choice. A lot of the retailers are using what they call blenders pumps. Uh, which basically gives the consumer a choice. When they pull up there, they can buy E10, which is 87 octane. They can buy E15, which is 88 octane. Uh, or they can buy up to E80 or E85 uh, blend if they have a flex fuel vehicle. The reason E15 is so important is virtually any car uh, in, in America, in the car park, can use it, 90% are allowed to use E15. Every car manufactured since 2001, which is you know, a decade and a half ago, can legally use E15. It's cheaper than E10, it's higher octane, it's cleaner. Uh, the more ethanol you put in the tank, the less uh, carcinogens you put in from uh, the uh, uh, fuel mix that's provided from the refinery. So uh, we think it's a, it's a great product. We know it's a great product. It's great for consumers, it's great for the environment, but it's also an answer to uh, some of the challenges we're facing in the farm economy. America's farmers are the best in the world, by far, of any sector at being able to produce. In fact, they overproduce. We're sitting here with a two billion bushel corn crop overhanging the market, two billion bushels more than can be used. If you go to E15 nationwide, that will use about two billion bushels of corn. When you get supply and demand in balance, farmers get a fair, profitable price at the marketplace. If you have this huge overhead, it depresses farmers. And corn, being the largest crop in the nation, uh, is kind of the king of raising or lowering commodity prices. And so if the corn crop is down, it brings down others. I like to use the term, a rising tide lifts all boats, a sinking ship brings them down in their wake. We have gone over into the decline in farm income, and it's going to be a tough, tough time unless we increase consistent domestic demand for those commodities to add value to. I'm with Tom Bias. He is with Growth Energy. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Kyle. Come back after the break for this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. This is Eric Stone Street, and as many of you know, I love my home state of Kansas. In March, Kansas ranchers lost homes, equipment, and thousands of cattle from the largest wildfires in the state's history. Imagine losing all you have in a fire. Not just your house, but your livelihood. Ranchers are beginning to rebuild, but it will take years and tens of millions of dollars to build back herds, fences, and other infrastructure. Today I'm asking you to help. Donate what you can and show your support to the ranchers of Kansas. Simply go to kansasfires.com. Your donation is tax deductible and will go to those who need it the most. 